it's Kim, notes from my needle. Welcome back to the floss tube number eight. Uh, if you're a subscriber, welcome back. If you're new, welcome. I hope you enjoy. Um, I think I'm gonna jump right in and just show you my finishes right off the bat. First finish I have is from Tiny Modernist and it is Every Day in His Adventure. I love how this turned out. Um, this is using none of the called for colors because I didn't have anything that was called for so I just pulled stuff from my stash that looked similar and I really love how it turned out. I'm not sure of the fabric. It's something I bought off Facebook in a random lot of fabrics and I'm not quite sure what it is but it's kind of like a like a dusty green olivey color and I just felt like it suited the pattern really well so I'm really happy with how that turned out. My next finish is Good Morning Maui's Rainbow Bright. If you're a kid of the 80s, you will know and love Rainbow Bright as much as I do. Um, I have some rainbow fabric that I had used to make my daughter a pencil case for school that I think will go perfectly with this. And I think I am going to turn this into a small little notions pouch. And I'm not sure what this fabric is either. This was a sample that uh, hand dyed by Stephanie sent me ages ago to see if I liked stitching on even weave. Um, I don't think this is a 28 count. I think it's probably a 32 just because of how small the stitching is compared to this one. And this is a 28 count. So I'm pretty sure this is a 32, um, but it turned out really cute and I really love this and I can't wait to finish it off. And then the last finish I have, excuse me, is Country Cottage Needleworks Santa Sampler. I am obsessed with how this turned out. Um, I really like how it looks. My French knots are not the greatest. They're not super consistent, but I think that lends itself well to kind of the old, I get a kind of old fashioned vibe off of this. So I feel like it lends itself well to not be perfect. I'm gonna finish this as a flat fold. I, I'm not sure when I'm gonna finish it just because there's not really any rush because this is not going to be displayed again until December of this year. So I'm going to take my time, find the perfect fabric to go with it and get that going. Uh, let's hop into some whips. I have a new start, which is a whip now. And that is the inspirational poster by Emma Condon. She's known on Etsy as Stitch Rovia. I'm really liking this, although this banner here was the bane of my existence this weekend. Um, I had to pick and redo around this U probably about four times, and then there was a spot here I had to pick and undo because I was off by like two and it was driving me crazy. Um, Steph from Just Keep Stitching is doing this. She's almost finished hers and it looks amazing. Um, it's definitely worth it, even though, like, it doesn't look like it would be challenging, but, I mean, some of this full coverage stuff is, like, very, very intense. And this is from World of Cross Stitching Magazine. I think it was either June or July of 2016. It's issue number 242, if you want to try and search it out. I know you can still get it on Xenio, and you may still be able to get it through um, the Google Play Store in the newsstand. I'm not sure about iTunes because I don't use Apple, so I'm not sure if you can get it in the in the App Store or not. Um, my next whip that I worked on is my Joan Elliott Canadian Beauty. I know, shocking, right? Uh, I put all of this leaf wing type thing in here. I'm hoping to get back to her later this week. Um, my goal this week is to finish my Joan Elliott Magical Butterfly, seeing as that's the one that's nearest completion, and all it needs is the beading. And it's not like the beading is hard, it's just time consuming and tedious because there is so much beading. Um, I mean, definitely not Mirabilia level beading, but it's still a lot of beading. The next whip that I worked on is another Tiny Modernist piece, and it is my Halloween sal. And this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna fold this up a little bit so that I can show you closer the areas that I worked on. So, 
I finished all of this room. I know you can't really make the skeleton guy out too well because my fabric dyed, it dried lighter than I would have liked. I would have liked to have been a little bit darker, but by the time I had realized that, I had already finished two rooms and I wasn't about to restart it and unpick it. Um, I'm hoping that when I finish it, if I put a piece of white fabric underneath, it'll kind of make those whites pop more because they'll be more opaque. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm going to try and find out. I did also put in all of this area on the bottom, including like this jack-o'-lantern, these tombstones and stuff, the grass, this. And then I did also start this room up here. So that's the feet of Dr. Frankenstein there. So yeah, I'm really liking how that's coming along as well. I don't think it'll take me too much more time to finish this. But again, I'm not super super you know like gung-ho let's go because it's not going to be finished or displayed until October so I have time and that's all for my whips um I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my plans right now like I'm trying to get most of these whips kind of gone and done because I would like to at some point do like a haul and get some new patterns in but I'm, I'm trying to stitch what I have and get some stuff done before I start new things. And it's super hard because I'm seeing people post all of these fun things and I want to stitch them all, but I have to refrain. And I have a massive wish list going on the Traditional Stitches website. So, and that's kind of getting up there and I'm hoping to start buy. I might start buying maybe one a month just to make it so I don't go crazy wanting to stitch all of the stuff and so that I feel like I'm actually getting to enjoy well it's not that I don't enjoy my hobby but just to get some new things in so I can rotate some stuff um I did also talk about trying to do what Priscilla and Chelsea do where they have set days for set things like Merry Mondays and Santa Sundays and Witchy Wednesday stuff like that um, I tried it that does not work for me um, because a lot of my pieces with the exception of like the rainbow bright and the the tiny modernist every day is an adventure most of my pieces are larger so to just work on one day I feel like I'm not really making any progress and then I have to switch to something else just when I'm getting into the groove of you know getting you know a quarter of a page finish or a half a page finish or something to that effect where I just kind of want to keep going with it to see how far I can go with it before I get tired of doing it and I want to move to something else so I think what I'm going to do for now is basically at the beginning of the week go hey I want to stitch on x and then stitch on that for the entire week and if I decide halfway through the week, okay, I'm done with this, I want to switch to something else, cool. If not, if I want to stitch on it longer, I'm just going to do what I want when I want. Because I feel like that's going to work better for me and it's not going to be as rigid and I'm not going to stress out about cross stitch. And I don't want to stress about cross stitch because it's my hobby, it's my de-stress, it's my me time. So I kind of don't want to do that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do for this year is I went to my local dollar store and I just purchased this little notebook with the, the bookmark. It's just regular lined paper. And I'm gonna use this as a stitching journal. So for example, it's gonna it's just gonna be for new projects that I'm starting because I'm not gonna try to go through and remember what fabric I had for like, for example, the magical butterfly that I'm doing from Joan Elliott. I know that's a uh, fabrics by Stephanie, but I have no clue which one it is because it's literally I think four or five years old so I don't know but for example like I put down the Emma Condon piece so I just put you know the name of the design the designer where the de design is from when I started it when I finished it what fabric and threads I'm using and then I think I'm going to try to take a photo of the finished piece and put it at the bottom uh, I think it's going to be really neat to see if I can keep up with that, especially to put the photos in too. I think it would be nice like to hang on to this and then go back, especially, you know, if pieces 
get lost or get given away, especially if I'm stitching something for a gift. It would be nice to look back and be like, oh yeah, I remember stitching that and that was really fun and this is a picture of what it looked like and this is who I gave it to and they really loved it. And I just think that it, it's gonna be a neat kind of little capsule of what I was working on and what kind of patterns I was into at this particular period in my life. So there's that. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of haul. Uh, I purchased this super cute sloth fabric. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use it for yet, but the second I saw those sloths, they had to come home with me. They were just too cute to leave at the store. And I did also purchase this for finishing the tiny modernist piece. Um, like I said, in the, at the, on the cover page for that pattern, the way it's finished, it looks like it's mounted on mat board with some batting underneath to give it a little bit of loft and cushion. And then it's in the middle of something similar to this, but this piece is painted white. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna lightly coffee tea dye this, or tea stain it, and then sand it to rough it up and give it that weathered look, and then do whitewash over top and maybe sand that and see how that looks. And I'm going to probably leave about I want to say an inch of border around the piece just because I feel like this is bigger than the one that's shown in the picture and if I finish it the way I normally finish with just about a quarter inch I think it'll look too small for here so I'll finish it a little bit bigger this needs a good sanding I mean even though this is craft wood it's there's definitely some little picky bits off it so I definitely want to do that um, I did order a few other things that haven't shown up yet I ordered I want to say three or four new needle needle minders from a seller in one of my groups the Canadian on, Canada only buy and sell cross stitch um, her name is Robin Maine and she does actually my Wonder Woman is from her so she does those flat plastic needle minders she does have some like fancier metal crystally ones but I really like these flat plasticky ones because I just think they're so fun. So I ordered a few of those from her and those should be here probably today or tomorrow. Um, if they come before I upload this video, I'll put a picture at the end so that you can see them. I did also order some new scissors eBay, but I'm sure those will probably take about a month to get here. I did also purchase two new patterns. I was on the Stitch Mania group yesterday and somebody had mentioned mybobbin.com and I had never heard of that site before so I was intrigued and I went on and there are so many really cute patterns a lot of them aren't really my aesthetic but I mean there was a few that I really really enjoyed one is um it's like a long skinny it's about I want to say about yay big and it's on black fabric and it's all different kinds of feathers and the feathers are all in these really rich purples and blues and it's super vibrant and it's so pretty so I purchased that I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually do it on black fabric or not because I find the black fabric really hard to stitch on and really hard on the eyes um, I may attempt it I definitely would have to use a 14 count fabric there's no way that I could go smaller on the darker fabric because it would just be too hard um, I did also think maybe uh, doing it on white fabric or a really light fabric and changing some of the colors out I know DMC has some really bright like vibranty like neon-y colors and I was thinking that it might look really good in those um, or to change out some of them for some petite treasure braid to make it like really bright and glittery I don't know I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet um, but it was really pretty and I couldn't resist and the other one that I bought was just a quote pattern um, I will insert pictures at the end. I cannot remember the, the gist of the quote. It's, I've seen it all over Etsy. It's like, you're stronger than you know, braver, and you were, and remember you're loved. It's, it was just really nice. And I think what I'm going to do is I bought um, four skeins of hand dyed by Rolanda's flosses when I bought the fabric that I did my Santa sampler on. And the green and the purple especially are really nicely variegated and I think would lend themselves really well to a pattern like that. So I think I'm going to do it all in the one color 
and I'm not sure I might give it to a friend of mine she's been having a rough go lately and when I saw that quote it actually kind of really reminded me of her and spoke to me as something that like I feel like she should remember that she's you know she's a boss and she needs to remember that she's rocking it even when it feels like she's not and I mean that's that's pretty much it I do need to find an option for storing and displaying my needle minders because I've gotten quite a few now and they're all kind of like attached to the top of my Oort jar on a little like lid about yay big so it uh, it's not really working too much anymore I went to Michael's because at one point they had had these galvanized um, pieces that you could hang um, but all I found there recently were ones that are shaped like giant gift tags and they come in a pack of six I don't need six I just want one kind of rectangular piece of galvanized just to hang on the wall next to my sewing machine to stick all these needle minders on so they have a permanent home um I mean I think that's it uh it's gonna be a quick one today I'm trying to stay warm it's minus 20 degrees celsius here with the wind chill it's so cold that they're not even allowing the kids to stay out at the school and play before they go into the school they're calling them right in uh, I'm gonna finish the rest of my coffee in my Ray Dunn mug that I found on clearance for three dollars at Marshall's and I hope the rest of you are staying warm and having a great day. Great day. <laughs> Need more coffee. Until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.